everyone. My name is Anna Lomprier and this is Jules O'Neill and we are the Wayfinders for the Cornwall Memory Cafe Network. Good morning everybody. It Good is morning. wonderful, a gorgeous spring morning and we have Sarah Arundel and Caroline Ellis, the amazing awesome incredible uh admiral nurses and it's been um we've we've had to pin you down because you're very busy out there in cornwall doing amazing work and uh we're here today um as part of the Cornwall Memory Cafe Network, I'm a Wayfinder, Anna Lomprier, to interview these two wonderful women about the Admiral Nurses and what their charity is all about. So thank you so much for your time. And um, I'm going to, first of all, ask you both to introduce yourselves, if that's OK. Yeah, of course. So uh, my name's Caroline Ellis and I am the strategic lead or the team manager of the Admore Nurse Service in Cornwall. Lovely. Thank you. And, and I'm Sarah Arundel, um, Admiral Nurse. I predominantly cover the uh, east and north of Cornwall, but um, also cover the whole of Cornwall. So I've got quite a lot of families that I'm supporting both central and west Cornwall as well. Wow. Wow. And I, Thank you. I should actually mention that we actually do have a team of Admiral Nurses. So we've got Sarah, he Haley, and Helen. Um, Haley and Helen are not joining us today, but they are part of our team. And we also have an assistant practitioner, Demelza, who is also fantastic and unfortunately can't be here today. But it, we are quite a small team. So it's myself, the three nurses and Demelza. So there's five of you in all that support yeah. the whole of Cornwall. That's right. Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. And so for people that have never heard of the Admiral Nurses or have heard of them but don't fully know what you're about, can you tell us about the charity and how it started? Yes, absolutely. So Admiral Nurses was actually founded, uh, the whole idea of Admiral Nursing was founded by two sisters who used to look after their father um, who had vascular dementia and he was known as Joseph his name was Joseph Levy and um, he was fondly known as Admiral Joe because he loved sailing anyway when the sisters were looking after their dad they noticed that there wasn't much support for the carers who they were looking after their dad not much sort of guidance someone for them to talk to to provide emotional support someone to be a link to them um so sadly when um when their father died they um had a thought about what was the best thing to do because they wanted to make sure that carers and families had the support that they didn't so mm. they founded um dementia uk which is the charity and the and the name admiral nurses after their father's nickname admiral joe and uh -huh. that's what Admiral Nursing is all about. So we are um, specialist dementia nurses um, who specialise in supporting the families, the carers to provide advice, guidance, support, counselling, family therapy. I mean, our roles are so diverse, to be honest. Wow. And we, we it's very person centred. So whatever the carer or the family person is wanting to talk about, then we will hopefully do that and help them. So Thank that's a little you. bit of history. There's a bit of history. That's I amazing. love that story, actually. Yeah. I really do. Understanding where the name Admiral uh, came from and Admiral Nursing. Comes from. Yeah. Amazing. And are the Admiral nurses, so they're connected to Dementia UK, are they across yeah. the UK? Um, yes. Because I, yes. OK. Yes. Yeah, so um, there are about 400 and it, it does change uh, the numbers exactly, but around 400 nationally. Um, and there are Admiral nurses all in all different 
sort of areas of care settings. So there are Admiral nurses in sort of care home environments, in the community, in the acute hospitals, uh, you know, so it's it's quite wide um, in hospices as well. Um, and this is where I'm really delighted to be here today, actually, to talk to you a bit more about our service, because we are quite unique in how yes. we work um, and how we support carers and families in Cornwall. But yes, so it is a national and, and so Dementia UK um, will work very closely with hosts um, and our host in Cornwall is Royal uh, RCHT, Royal Cornwall Hospital NHS Trust. And right. that is who we are employed by. So in Cornwall, we're employed by, by RCHT, Royal Cornwall Hospital NHS Trust, but work in partnership with Dementia UK. I see. Wow. And what's beautiful about it, as far as I understand, is that you're all qualified, trained, very experienced nurses in your own right as well. Yes, absolutely. So um, uh, Admiral Nursing is, is taken very seriously and Dementia UK wanted to make sure that the Admiral Nurses have had a good uh, experience, have worked in other areas, uh, particularly in dementia care previously, and have mm. a wide knowledge of how to support people living with dementia and understanding the complexities of that, yeah. but also how best to, with that knowledge, how to get the best support for the carers. Um, so actually, um, we all do have um, induction training through Dementia UK, how to become a specialist admiral nurse. So every admiral nurse is, goes through that training. And so it's all very standardised and it's all very um, highly sort of focused on the sort of needs for the carers and the families. And normally I've worked in other fields for, for five years years plus um, with that experience and actually all admiral nurses start as sort of a senior level so a band six um, wow. uh, of of uh, expertise yes That's amazing yeah. Yeah. amazing and so how have you like maybe tell us a little bit about both of you it'd be lovely to hear about your personal experience of working as an admiral nurse and how um yeah how you have come into the role and and how you feel about this work maybe that I think that'd be lovely to hear yeah shall I just go first Sarah I'm sorry yeah, I'm sure. doing quite a lot no, of talking here no, Sarah no, no, you, you carry on <laughs> you're, you're in the you're in the zone so you yeah, carry on what, <laughs> what, um, what I'd like to do if, if it's okay is just explain a bit about the history of how Admiral Nursing with, with, since I've been involved um, yeah. and how how it all started in Cornwall so it was about five years ago when I first started um, in Cornwall working as an admiral nurse and it was then working um, in the acute hospital setting. So I was okay. there to support families and carers when they came into the Trelisk Hospital or the, Saint, um, the hospital at St Michael's in Hale or West Cornwall Hospital in Penzance. And that was my role. It's really about um, being on the wards, um, uh, sort of identifying when carers were there and needed that support during discharge, the sort of discharge, complex sort of discharges yeah. that were happening and to make sure that they knew what sort of support was available in the community. This was going quite well. I had to start off and nobody really knew about Admiral Nursing and it took a while really for me to sort of established myself and the role within the sort of, the sort of healthcare settings um, and yeah. to understand and sort of educate and support the teams and the nursing teams to think about the families and the carers who also do need that time. They need that support. They need yeah. um, information to understand what resources are out there, who they can go to if things change, you know, that sort of work. Um, so I was doing this for um, a few years, maybe just less than two years, actually. And then we had the pandemic. So as we all know, it's a really difficult time, and especially for people living with dementia and their families with 
all the usual sort of respite options that were there all stopping um, and people were in their own homes caring in the most um, difficult period of time with no other support very minimized support or normal respite sort of you know options that they had so I had to think about at that time um, how I was going to adapt and evolve and try to get the best care for the carers still because actually um, they weren't coming into the hospitals the families weren't allowed to come into the hospitals and visit or be involved so at that point I actually um, adapted with support um, of supporting the carers and families when they lived in their own homes so I outreached more I decided I had to be more integrated so uh, that's at that point I said right we've got to support families when they live in their own homes also if they are admitted to any community hospitals but also if they are ever in the acute hospital setting but Mm. that and I decided to do that and it was just myself at this time no team and so I did this by becoming telephone liaison support and then it worked really well and it was brilliant because it was more engaging and it helped the continu- continuity of care and support mm. and if and, then, and with the transition of care that was supported you know for with the, the family care following their story Anyway, cut a very long story short because actually I know I could probably take up all this time and I really would like That's to. amazing. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and uh, then we then got a team um, started and they actually started in March last year um, of actually clinical work starting. And um, that is then with, with the three nurses who helped to join me and the assistant practitioner. And that is where we're all at. And we actually still use the same care pathway idea of being integrated. So we still do because it works so well of um, supporting the whole of Cornwall, not just the acute hospital setting. We sort of help support um, families in any care setting. So really, if they live in their own homes, community hospitals, acute hospitals, but also the transition, the initial transition into any care home, we're there for families. So that's wow. a little bit of story of how it all started uh, sort of over the last five years. Thank you, Caroline. That's it's brilliant. And and what a growing, um, a, amazing growing offering that you're bringing and so needed, so needed. Okay. Yeah, thank yes. you. So, and Sarah, do you want to share how you've <laughs> how you got involved in this absolutely absolutely so just a bit of my background so I've been a registered mental health nurse since 2001 um did four years working in acute psychiatric services or acute inpatient services at Bodmin Hospital which was gave me a fantastic foundation um never regret or you know learned so much from that process um and then I took a leap of faith and left the NHS to go and work in the independent sector so working in nursing homes care homes um doing my degree leadership degree and wanted to build up wanted to build up an understanding of the 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 troubles that the independent sector face in delivering dementia care Um, and then uh, you know I was writing in my degree about this um difficulties between primary and secondary care service where is dementia is concerned and then all of a sudden this new role called primary care dementia practitioners came about in I think 2012 so um yeah so I ended up being recruited as one of the first initial primary care dementia practitioners all those years ago um wow. really loved the job um, and then I think about a year into that, I then was looking at how services were sort of changing and evolving. And then I went and spent best part of 10 years working in memory assessment services. So that, again, gave me a fantastic foundation for assessing, diagnosing, um, looking at all the differential diagnosis, um, subtypes of dementia, learned a huge amount through through that role. I bet. Um, always aspired to be an admiral nurse um it's something that I've always wanted to do and and there was you know no other role I could consider leaving my previous job for um so I've now been in this role for close to 18 months not quite 18 months but getting there and it's it's just one of the most rewarding jobs you could ever wish to to wish to have um 
uh, it's an absolute privilege to support the families that that we engage in. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's really being able to make a difference to the lives um, of carers and families yeah. looking after somebody with a dementia and using all of my previous experience and wealth and being able to to sort of upskill the carers to carry on caring in their in their role. So yeah. Oh, that's impressive. So it really does sound like you are the creme de la creme when it comes to um, the expertise, the lived experience, all that weight of experience that you've both got that you're bringing. Um, and and we, we need to make sure that everybody out there knows uh, about the Admiral Nurses. So um, another question then that's brilliant. Another question that's coming to mind is, is then how do people find you if they're not in an acute ward if they're not um in a in coming in and out of a uh, respite or something how how do they access you how can um people find you well um they can find they can literally i can give them our email address and you can email us um we um you can actually talk to their gp and a gp can make referrals you can talk to a nurse and anyone can make a referral to us actually interestingly last month we had over 16 um sources of how we had people refer to us so we've wow. had di different people so uh, but the main route is um probably to email um or telephone um and we actually of course we work so closely with dementia uk they also do have um the helpline uh telephone number to, to for advice or support and they do also sometimes refer those calls to us as well right. um interestingly we are having an increase of self referrals um wow. so this is this is great because this means that uh people are recognizing who are looking after their loved ones with dementia that they do need to talk about it i think it's there's always been a history isn't there that an old sort of myth that you know if you are a carer um and looking after someone however tough it can get you just got to deal with it and that's just the way it is you know it doesn't matter what's going on that's part of you you and that's just the way life is but Absolutely. What is wonderful now is that um, families and carers are recognising that talking to someone about the difficulties, the stress, the feelings of isolation that can happen when you're caring and looking after someone, the feelings of guilt, it is OK to say, mm. do you know what, I want Absolutely. to talk to someone, a specialist nurse, about that. Um, one of the things that um we always say as a team that when we first ask when we first talk to the carers and the families one of the first questions we actually ask them is how are you and yeah. it's incredible how families are literally taken aback by that because their focus is always on the person that they are looking after which is absolutely right as well but no one really asks about how they are yeah, and no. um you know and it's incredible what emotions come out with that but what i will do while sarah um carries on if she wants to in a minute yes. is yes. I'll just, um i will make sure that i've got the right telephone number and the email address and i'll just give a little uh, script of how to make a referral to our team yeah. that would be amazing yeah i was just going to say um a lot of the time um, you've got older people looking after older people as well, which I think is miraculous yeah. sometimes is is husbands or wives um, or partners looking after and just the um, responsibility and the weight of that mm. is yeah. so yeah. much. And I also think an old, the older generations especially seem to sort of feel like you were saying Caroline it's like well uh, this is my you know this is my um, responsibility to care and yeah it's I shouldn't yeah show yeah. that I'm struggling yeah so yeah. 
that's that's why also Anna we we make ourselves as accessible um, to families as is possible so our referral criteria is very minimal really so we only have that the the person that be, is being that's being cared for has a dementia diagnosis a formal diagnosis right. okay. and the carer consents if it's another healthcare professional making the referral that the carer consents obviously it's a self-referral then they are consenting via that means so um but yeah we we do we yeah we we try to make ourselves as easy easy to access that's yeah. amazing Absolutely. that's interesting about the diagnosis so if you had somebody contacting you that hadn't got a diagnosis i would imagine then you would support them and guide them to back to their gp would you yeah, to say just, this is this is the yeah. path where you probably do need to get a diagnosis yeah we, we get, you know, a, a few occasions where um, the carers have made contact as a self-referral and, you know, through sort of different investigations, we found out that there isn't actually a formal dementia diagnosis, but then either either liaise with the GP directly in terms of making a referral to the memory assessment service um, or, or, yeah, or navigating, that, nav navigating that for the carer or telling them what needs to happen next to, to get a formal diagnosis. That sounds brilliant. That sounds brilliant. So any anything else before I ask my next question? We, we was anything on the top of tip of your brain that you wanted to say? Um, yeah, I just oh, go on, Sarah. <laughs> I, I'm, I was just going to say what's what I think is fabulous about this is, is that we are an integrated service. So we have direct accessibility to linking and liaising really closely with the safeguarding team, learning disability team, lots of different other you know uh professionalism so um it's, it's great being able to tap i've had to use the homeless officer before rcht wow. so um yeah being able to have accessibility to other so sources of support for families is, is really um invaluable it really is because i think a lot of the time people in the experience living with the experience of either being a carer um, or living with dementia sometimes you can be reaching out to certain services and nothing seems to be happening and it's really only when it gets to crisis point or if you've got a professional that already has the networking the connections and knows how to make things happen um, that's what it sounds like you're doing yeah absolutely and I think it's really it's really difficult for families to actually navigate themselves around the health and social mm -hmm. care system. I mean, this is where we can be a really useful link because we do know where to go um, at the time. We do know which teams support each other um, yeah. and and what what is the relevant team that needs to be put into place for whatever their problem is at that time. But yeah, I mean, we we are there for, you know, our, our roles are diverse. You know, obviously we can support any best interest meetings that if we're involved with the family um, in any hospital environment, we can, yeah. you know, we provide um, help and support in sort of family dynamics and discussions. Um, we provide right. sort of counselling and psychological support for the family. So, um, in 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 relation to feelings of guilt or um, immense stress, or if they've got previous difficulty in the in the relationship that the person they're caring for, then we can help and support and talk that through. We wow, that's um, amazing. we you know there's so there's so many aspects of how we support the families and what we try to uh, have with the families is a structure. Um, it's all very person centred, but it has a structure, a structure. So all our care and support is meaningful because actually, ultimately, um, we're here to provide that support. But we're actually there to sort of promote that independence and promote the, the tools in the box, so to speak, is full so that if things deteriorate in the future, they then know how best to manage those. And um, yeah. there's a lot of lots of referrals that have come in recently following quite a new diagnosis of dementia and right. you know what does that mean um who what 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 happens what how will that impact their lifestyles and yeah. and and it's also reassurance because actually you can everyone can live the well with dementia and about yes. talking it in a positive light and making sure that to dementia is spoken about and and it's is not such a taboo it is okay you know mm. there are loads of resources out there 
Um, yeah. As we all know, we are, yeah. we're part yeah. of the Dementia Partnership Board and we do know that there are so many services out there now who are, we are in Cornwall, we are, you know, team, team dementia and trying to get the best support for everybody out there. And that's part of yeah. our ethos of Admiral Nursing as well, is really linking in with everybody and making sure that we're all trying our best to get the best you know, outcome for their situation. One of, Amazing. One of the other things I absolutely love about this job is that a lot of our work is remote liaison. Um, so, you know, telephone support most of the time. But yeah. one of the things I absolutely love is the support in head programme events that that we host. So we, we might have been supporting people for a couple of months or so. And then we invite them to the support in a head programme event where they get to meet us face to face. and We get to meet them face to face. So um, which is a really, you know, good opportunity. Wow. Can you say more on that? I don't. Is it supporting head? Supporting a head. A head. So supporting a head. Tell me more about this. I haven't heard about this. This is Caroline's baby, so I'll let her tell you more about this. Well, no, I don't. I don't. If, if, <laughs> um, well, I'll start. You can finish that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, so the supporting a head program. The whole idea about that was um, is trying to help families identify what services and organizations are available in Cornwall but by getting us all in one room so uh, families are invited to attend a supporting a head program where I invite as many organizations and services that I can think of and who are available to also be there so we as professionals or services we all stand up in front of everybody and we introduce our, ourselves and we explain who we are what our service is and and how we can help and wow. we do that one by one and it can be a little bit over sort of bearing really at sometimes because there's so many of us that it can be a little bit confusing so to help with that um, we then have a, a mingling session. So every service and organisation there has their own table and stand with displays, um, leaflets, and actually um, can actually take referrals there and then. So what I describe as a holistic referral access point. And it's amazing. In fact, the way. last one we went to, we were at Mara Zion and we had a really lovely, great turnout. And then in the middle of introductions, there was suddenly this loud beeping noise. And we all looked outside the window and thought, oh, what's going on? And we found a massive fire engine turning up. <laughs> and and uh, the, fire, the, fire, the fire team, service team came out and they were actually there as well to introduce themselves and how wow. they also help and support people living with dementia and what their roles are so it's really diverse That's how many services incredible. are there yeah so you're running those it's not a static thing you're running those all yeah. across Cornwall yeah. so once you've got a, a you can see a certain amount of um people in an yeah. area you're like right let's get all of these now in into um a, a physical space where yeah. they can also ask questions and yeah I mean and I love that terminology about holistic can you say that yeah. again so it's a holistic referral access point love it yeah holistic. so that that is oh. it's and that's exactly what it is it's all about all the sort of needs of the family um and we are there to try and help them with all the different services there and mm. it's so nice um it works in both ways because it helps for us as professionals to all understand what we all do and understand our roles. Yes. But also it really helps the, the carers and families to see the face behind the name. Because mm. sometimes if you say like Dementia UK or Admiral Nursing, you're not quite sure if that's for you or who we are. Or is it, it's quite a daunting concept to actually make that initial contact. So Absolutely. this is this is all about us trying to say that we are friendly <laughs> faces behind the name and we're willing to help and try and get the best for you it's so amazing because what I'm sorry and what I'm thinking as well is a lot of the time if you can then um the the the, the people that that are coming for that support you might see oh there's a loophole here or there's a you know there's a need here where will that person best be that need be met and served yeah um yeah. yeah 
It's a real, it's a real lovely buzz, it's a buzz. Isn't it, Sarah. Yeah, and the feedback. I mean, we we do surveys, and the feedback that we get. I mean, it's 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 evident the feedback is is sort of direct because carers as they're leaving are saying we didn't realise there was so much available to us in Cornwall. The resources and you know the networking and the levels of support they can actually feel quite overwhelmed at the end of Absolutely. it, realising what is available to them. So yes, yeah, it's fantastic. Yes. And so if I if I bumped into somebody at a memory cafe, could I then say contact you and say, I think these people would really benefit from coming for um, one of those events to. Um, yeah. 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 I think we've got. Yes, absolutely. I think we've got roughly about somewhere close to 100 carers to invite to the next one. Um, so, yeah. Wow. And where, where is else? the next one? It's at Carn and Downs. Oh, amazing. Hall. Amazing. Oh, that sounds so good. Yeah. Um, all right. So then I've got another question. Um, in your experience, um, what would help a carer when things do start to escalate and become really challenging? Um, what do you feel would be the next steps for a carer? So they're out there, they're feeling really overwhelmed, things have escalated, they're really challenged. What would you suggest would be the best steps? I mean, I think I know the answer. But... I'm going to be a bit biased and say get in contact with the Admiral Nurse Service. Yeah. Um, we can we can start to navigate everything for them. Um, yeah. It's a really quite a drilling down into quite an in-depth triaging process with the families to to get an understanding from their perspective as to what their struggles what they're struggling with. Um, is it you know are they directly struggling with their carers' role because they have got their own health issues? You know, mm. we're, we're supporting carers who have got cancer diagnosis really complex situations um so it's really about understanding it from the carer's perspective first and foremost really um and then looking you know looking at who's already involved who needs to be involved um we can just sort of support through that that process really i think it's important for carers to know that they're not alone um and that you know when we start sort of talking to them about other sort of scenarios, they can identify with that and, you know, make them feel not quite so isolated in, in being yeah. alone with the situation. Um, That's brilliant. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. OK, so anything else you want to say? I reckon we've covered so much uh, and I've learned so much um, as well. I, I love this. Um, how many times have you done this? where it's in-person event? Oh, uh, we've, um, we've done it for a few years um, wow. at the, the, the Supported Head Programme. Um, but our, we try to run them once a quarter and oh, we okay. hold them in different areas in Cornwall each time. So we've had one at Callington, we've had one in Roach, we've had one in Marazine at Penzance and the next yeah. one is in May, Con May, May the 31st at Carnan wow. Downs Village Hall. Um, wow. what, what, I, what I would say is I'll just add now our email address. So if anybody would like to attend, just to email this email address, um, which is rcht.admiralnurse at nhs.net. And that's also if you'd like to make a referral or want to discuss a referral, that's probably the best way forward. And the telephone number is 07823 Thank so, you. And we'll put all of that in the show notes as well. So yeah, you'll, yeah. everyone will be able to get in contact. And um, yeah. I will definitely be letting people know about the 31st of May in Carn and Downs. In fact, I'm going to the Carn and Downs Memory Cafe today. So if I meet people that I think would really benefit, I can let them know to reach out and contact you. Yeah, it'd be lovely. Yeah, because we have to we have to register those that are going to attend Absolutely. because obviously yeah. not bre not breaching fire regulations we and capacity and things like that. So exactly. We're not going to do a mass. <laughs> um, flash mob no 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 yeah oh <laughs> uh, anything else no no I, I just hope that you know I think it's just you know for every carer who may be listening or if you know a carer or you are a carer yourself you know it is okay to shout out and to ask for help 
and mm. you know you, we don't want you to be out there alone so engage not even if it's not even with our service do talk to your GP and explain that you just need someone to talk to or you need some help and just Thank to add you. on to just to add yeah, on, go on to that, Sarah. That, that not all carers identify themselves as being carers so it's just part and parcel of what they do and they fall into that role without really knowing that they are a carer um, yes. so it's just to just to make sure people are aware that it can be that then they might not feel they're doing very much um, or involved in any great way but you know um, yeah it's important to identify who carers are really yeah that's amazing thank you and I, what I what I'm getting is that no n nothing is too small really is that it's better to reach out and feel mm. like you're connected to something where support is there um mm. yeah for yeah, everybody because in that some, role some carers come to us and they only need a little bit of advice they only need a little bit of signposting a little bit of support a one-off phone call and, and other yeah. carers um and family dynamics and situations are incredibly complex and they need to be with us for the duration mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's very, very diverse. Wow. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Caroline, for your time. And thank you, thank you everybody, thank for you, listening. Anna. It's been yeah. a real Thanks pleasure. This video was produced by Discover Voices, part of Disability Cornwall and Isles of Scilly. To check out all of our content, simply search Discover Voices on YouTube.